tonight is to uh, give some education on the purpose and the utilization of IV and injectable therapies and uh, why we need them, what they're good for, uh, and some of the changes that have happened over the last 25 years, 30 years of IV therapies. Um, just a little background, uh, basically IV nutrition and injectable nutrition is just a, it's all about the delivery system and it is one way to get nutrients, minerals, and other supplements doing so, you bypass several organs that it's called the first pass effect, and uh, you really can get much more bioavailability of the, of the nutrients, and uh, there are a lot of clinical studies out there that have supported this type of therapies for specific ailments, but they're finding that more and more utilization of these types of therapies is necessary. Um, one of the reasons that we are kind of in a situation of using IV problem with our, our food intake, problem with the manufacturing of the supplements, and uh, so we're going to get a little bit more in depth into some of the problems, and then we'll talk about uh, some specific things that we do with the IV therapies. Um, the Center for, Center for Disease Control just came out with a, uh, a new dietary guidelines, and it's part of the reason they came out with this is because there's a very high uh, increase in the amount of obesity, and there's also an increase in diagnosis of several diseases. Everyone's trying to tie it just down to obesity, but the question is, is why are more people getting obese? And people will go all around about that, but the bottom line is that we're eating un more unhealthy, and our foods are more unhealthy, and since, and hence, our bodies are more starved of nutrition and, and the nutrients that drive most of the chemical reactions in our body. So, one of the ways to combat that is obviously is trying to get more of the nutrients help some of these chemical reactions and, uh, and try to help some of the disease processes that are being caused by this. Um, the, in, that, in that research by the CDC, they, came, they found that the recommended amount of fruits and vegetables to be consumed daily is five to nine servings. They found that less than 35% of adults were getting two servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And the problem is also is that the kids from two years old to 18 were also in that same category. Less than 35 percent of the correct amount, even two servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Now, if you think about that, you already have it in a deficiency at that point. And you got to think, and then what are the foods that you're using to replace the fruits and vegetables? Most of the time, in all the adults and all the children, is that they're highly processed foods that have no nutritional benefits at all. So now you're finding that basically from a young age, they're getting basically just moving down, uh, growing up. So you, you can start to see why all of a sudden we're having an increase in obesity, an increase in uh, diagnosis of diabetes, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, bipolar disorder, depression. I mean, all these diagnoses have been going up over the last you know, five to ten years, and probably even longer than that. It just now is being so much more recognized. Um, some of the benefits of, uh, of uh, or we'll talk a little bit more about the, the food processing. Another thing that happened around the 1970s is they started introducing different uh, uh, artificial sweeteners. High fructose corn syrup was one of the big ones. And you can kind of look at its introduction in the 1970s. It really started to take, uh, the, the, the manufacturers really started introducing it into foods in high production in the 1980s. And if you look back and you see when our obesity problem and a lot of these diagnoses started to increase was right around that time. And part of that problem is artificial sweeteners, especially high fructose corn syrup, is thought of, the body doesn't recognize it. It's almost like a, uh, a, an adverse reaction in the body, an inflammatory reaction that happens and, and it just causes a uh, insulin resistance and it causes the body not to, uh, it just doesn't know how to handle it when you compare it to sugar. So you have all of our foods, even going down to uh, infant, infamil and some other of the uh, baby formula actually have high fructose corn syrup in it. And now what we're finding is that even, even some of the infants now just don't have baby fat. They're actually obese infants. And that obesity is carrying right through into the teenage years. Now we're getting diabetes diagnosed at the age of 12, never heard of. I mean, it's just, uh, it's really becoming a problem. So 
one of the things that we're trying to, to figure out is ways that we can supplement nutrition uh, and get, get the, uh, the bioavailability of the nutrients that we need to drive three to four hundred different chemical reactions in the body, including hormone balancing, insulin, uh, all your organ systems, your detoxification process, and all these things are really good to drive homeostasis in the body or, or you know, basically the sense of well-being. Oral supplementation, you get about um, somewhere between 5 and 25 percent of the bioavailability when you compare to IV or injectable therapies. And you also have a bunch of companies out there that are making supplements and you don't know what their fillers are, you don't know what type of capsules they're using, you don't know what type of glues they're using, you don't know what type of compression they're using. Half of these pills will usually go through the gastrointestinal system not even being absorbed at all. Uh, this studies have gone back to when they used to check the bottoms of septic tanks. They would find three to four feet layers of pill fragments and full pills at the bottom of these septic tanks because they just weren't digested. Um, and, you know, when you go into some stores, now, I mean, Nature's Patch is obviously a great place to find supplements. They're educated. They have good brands that actually make good supplements. But when you go into some stores, you can be overwhelmed by the number of different uh, uh, brands and types of supplements. And you're trying to figure out what do I need to get? How do I know if this is actually getting into my system? So it, it's, it's, it's very scary when you're trying to figure out how do I get the nutrients I need to get into my body. Well, one of the ways to kind of get that information and know what you're getting is to obviously do it IV or injectable therapy. That you know you're getting 100% bioavailability into the tissues, you're getting full tissue saturation, and it kind of takes the guesswork out of it. Um, one of the things that... Uh, Talk about uh, the pills. I thought I was going to slide. Um, when we also talk about oral supplementation, you know, a lot of people encourage multivitamins, and they did a large study and found that over 50% of people that take multivitamins on a daily basis or a larger uh, regimen of vitamin supplements, over 50% of them are still deficient in multiple categories of vitamins and nutrients, minerals, amino acids. And all these things are what drive the chemical reactions in the body. So you're not getting it in your food. You're not getting it in your oral supplementation. So what we're looking for is what are the other options. So back in about, uh, it's probably about 30 years ago, uh, there was a guy named Dr. John Myers. He introduced a vitamin cocktail, which he called the Myers cocktail. It was basically kind of the most recognized attempt at doing IV nutritional therapy. He ended up passing away in 1984. He had another doctor, that, Dr. Gabby, that took his information and started continuing IV therapies. Uh, but along the way, he had a lot. He, he did over a thousand and thousand IVs. Uh, and he was just starting to get started in the research part of it. His IVs were pretty simple. They had, uh, you know, they had uh, all the B vitamins in it, some magnesium, some calcium, and uh, a high dose vitamin C. And what they were finding is they were getting great results in a lot of different conditions. Uh, that therapy has not stopped. You know, Dr. Myers has passed away, but there are a lot of clinics that still offer what is called Myers cocktail. What's happened, though, since then is we've also advanced IV therapies, and we're starting to get into uh, to therapies with glutathione. Uh, glutathione is the body's best antioxidant. Uh, it is not absorbed well orally. It's been well established. The only way you can really get into your system and its active component is to get it in quickly into your, in through either injection or intravenous uh, therapies. Uh, glutathione is, uh, is essential for the detoxification and reducing inflammation in the body. Uh, there's things like Incobloba, Lime, uh, CoQ10. We're getting resveratrol in the solution, uh, expanding the, the minerals into this uh, IVs. Um, high dose vitamin C has gone from Grams, and now they're using up to 20 to 50 grams of vitamin C and IV drips. Other countries, they're finding it very useful for treating cancer. Here we can't obviously say that or actually say that we're treating, curing, or mitigating the disease, but they do have very good information in other countries. Um, another, uh, one of the things that we talked about was how diseases are on the rise. Another thing that we talk about is gluten sensitivity. When we talk about all these things that are happening and, 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 and really looking and going, is it really that all of a sudden everyone's allergic to wheat? Or is it go back to the processing of foods? And I think that it's a combination that there that's the type of foods, there's uh, genetic, genetically um, engineered foods now that are biased.
bodies are not able to handle. I don't necessarily think it's the wheat itself. I don't think that everyone's just all of a sudden allergic to foods. I think that the foods we're eating are different. And our bodies are looking at that as an inflammatory reaction, and our immune system is taking fight against these foods. And next thing you know, people are sick. Um, so that kind of spits on the theory of damage and repair. Uh, if your damage, if your damage outweighs your repair mechanism, you have illness and you have cellular change, and then you have changes like cancer, uh, different tumors, uh, inflammation, autoimmune. Your immune system starts running low because it's continually fighting inflammation just from the food you're eating. You don't have the uh, you don't have the nutrients to run the chemical reactions that are trying to make your immune system work and make your body have the energy it needs to fight. So next thing you know, you're starting to stress out your system, all your hormones, all your nutrients, and all of a sudden the body starts to go in crisis. Next thing you know, your, your organs aren't putting out the same amount of hormones, and next thing you know, you're starting to get overweight, your metabolism's not working, your sleep's interrupted, and it's this whole cascade of inflammatory events that happen, and it starts driving disease. And they're starting to find out that inflammation is really what is the cause of all the problems. Um, even with heart disease, cholesterol was a big thing that they thought everyone had to have extremely low cholesterol. Where now they're starting to think that it's just inflammation that can be driven from viruses, down the immune system, the foods we eat, and just the body's immune system not being able to be to have a higher repair mechanism than damage. So another thing that we try to do with IV therapy is improve your repair mechanism. The higher your antioxidant, the more nutrients you have, the better your chemical reactions are going to work in your body, and the better you are going to be able to fight damage. And that's the simplest way you can think about the body is damage and repair. You have better repair and less damage, you have health. And so when we go into that, you know, we talk a little bit about the IV and the nutrient side of it, but you got to think of all the different things that cause inflammation. We already talked about food. Our foods cause inflammation, and that's why we would suggest raw diets. You know, if you go into organic or raw foods, you reduce the processing, Reduce, introducing artificial sweeteners and chemicals and, and uh, uh, artificial coloring, all these things that basically the body looks at and says, what is this? It creates inflammation. You're eating food that you think is healthy, but you're actually just causing inflammation in the body. And after a while, you start seeing things change. And all of these things influence hormones. If you have inflammation, you have to have something to fight it. All of this is regulated by the nutrients and the hormones in your body. So once you start getting hormone depletion, then you start getting more and more unhealthy. So the bottom line is that you try to reduce the preventable health risks, smoking, obesity, uh, eating processed foods, trying to switch to more of a healthy diet. Of course, exercise. Exercise actually can help uh, in many different ways, obviously, with uh, uh, balancing the hormones and improving uh, the system function. But as far as the nutrients in the IV therapies for inflammation, pretty clear. Uh, our job is to increase your response and your repair mechanism, and increase your immune system, balance hormones, help with neurotransmitters, and, uh, and it's once you start getting that type of tissue saturation, you can actually see that the body starts.